Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Uh, hi, guys. Okay. Worcestershire sauce time. I'm a huge fan, been a big fan my whole life. Um, like a nice meatloaf, mashed potatoes with some Worcestershire so sauce on it, some butter. Mmm, nice. Yeah, original link to the video, top of the description below, right below that, link to the Discord. I just r ran up the stairs, and, uh, and I'm out of breath. I will exercise more in the spring, all right? Let's go. My name's Connor, by the way, if you're new. Hello, today we're in the West Midlands of England. Who is that? West is that fish? Hello, today we're in the West Midlands of England in Worcestershire, the home of Liam parents. We're going to see how they make their famous Worcestershire sauce. Today we're going to find out about its history and origin, what makes it so popular here in the UK, and then of course we're going to taste it. It's good, tasty, unique. Worcestershire sauce is a condiment made through a long-established maturing process with malt and spirit vinegar, molasses, red onions, garlic, anchovies, tamarind, and secret seasoning. The sauce can be enjoyed in a variety of ways, used to complement steaks, burgers, cocktails such as a Bloody Mary, and a British favorite, cheese on toast. But how did this famous sauce come into existence here in the West Midlands? So Liam Perrins I, I didn't know anchovies were a big ingredient. I, I never really stopped to think about what's in it. Steeped in over a hundred... I gotta shut up. Midlands. <laughs> so Liam Perrins is steeped in over a hundred and eighty years of history. You know, the story starts uh, in 1835 with Lord Sandys, who was uh, reputedly a nobleman of this county. And he'd been traveling in the Far East and had picked up this recipe for a sauce. And he loved it so much, he brought it back to Worcester and wanted it made up. He turned to uh, a couple of entrepreneur chemists, Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins, who owned a chemist shop in the center of Worcester in Broad Street. Uh, so he gave them the recipe. Uh, Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins got the ingredients from around the world and made up the sauce. And you know what? It tasted awful. Lord Sandys never returned. And Mr. Lee and Mr. Perrins put this uh, mixture in the basement of their chemist shop and didn't return to it until a couple of years afterwards when they tried it and it had matured into this wonderful elixir. And so started the kind of global fame of Lee and Perrins into what it is today. A happy mistake. After discovering their newfound popular sauce, the pair began selling it from their Broad Street chemist, which was quickly becoming popular with locals in the area. I feel like it's so iconic with that, that paper um, wrapping it's always in. Liam Perrins then relocated to a new factory in Worcester in 1897, where the sauce is still made today. There's a Worcester not far from me. All the New England towns are just stolen. Depending on your region, it will either be packaged in the iconic orange label or wrapped in a beige paper wrapper. So at the site here in Worcester, we do mainly Liam Perrin's production in glass bottles. 70-80% um, uh, of what we do is Liam Perrin, so quite a lot of volume. And also we also produce around about 43 million bottles a year. So depending on the bottle size that we're running at the time, we can run anything from two and a half tons an hour up to five and six tons per hour in terms of productive source. It's loud enough for you guys, right? Paul escorted us around the factory, showing us the making process. We started in the basement, where hundreds of barrels sit quietly maturing the Worcestershire sauce ingredients, just like it did over a hundred years ago. Paul starts by showing us one of the three main ingredients that go into Liam Perrin's sauce. Onions. Whole red onions. So we've got some red onions here that have been pickling for around about nine to ten months. And we've still got the whole red skin onion, which we noticed. But it's changed from being a very hard fruit, even though it's keeping its colour, to being a little bit mushy. And it's the 
process of breaking down the vegetable that creates this lovely juice that comes out that will give us that lovely flavour. The same process is also done with whole garlic cloves, which also sit in a barrel of malt vinegar to pickle for 18 months. One of the most interesting ingredients sitting in these barrels are anchovies. Right, right. Got, um, so, what keeps... Is it the vinegar? I mean, what, what, what keeps something from having mold grow on it? Um, is it, is it the, the contained barrels? It is it, obviously salt is a great preservative, but it didn't seem like there was salt in the other things. So I suppose vinegar, vinegar helps to combat like mold that you would see growing if you left, left a soggy onion or something and there are lots of them the fish which are captured and sent from spain age in 200 kilograms of salt for two years which help bring out the base flavor for the sauce Sus. after the ingredients have finished maturing they then go to the making house where they are mixed together the garlic, onions, anchovies and salt are added into this 5,000 litre tank. It then goes to the maturation storage area, where the ingredients are transferred and held in a larger 30,000 litre tank for a minimum of six weeks, Again. adding more ingredients, including their secret spices, further announcing the maturing process. Once complete, the sauce then goes to the final stage where it gets pasteurized. The sauce first goes through this holding tank before heading to the heat exchanger, which preheats the sauce for around two minutes, then cools it again before sending it to bottom. I like how she says sauce, sauce. It's finally time to try the Worcestershire sauce. One thing to keep in mind is that this sauce is basically everything that I hate. I'm not a big fan of vinegar, anchovies, uh, garlic, onions, and all these strong, strong flavors. Oh, that's gonna be strong, yeah. I think the winning point in here is that you don't taste the fish. I could never tell that there is fish in here. I can taste the vinegar and the garlic and the onions. You know, like, if you compare this to, like, the, the standard vinegar that you have on the market, this will taste more like a balsamic vinegar because it has some sweet notes. I have made a very sad-looking cheese on toast. So what we've done here is we put a little bit of the Lee and Perrin's sauce uh, just on top of the cheese before uh, putting this onto the grill. Oh yeah, there is sauce in here. <laughs> I think this one is a very, a very good option. The sauce actually elevates it. So overall, not for me, but it's still a great sauce. I love it on mashed potatoes. Like if I have a nice, especially if I have, um, you know, not drenched, not like completely drenched mashed potatoes, but just because it'll, it'll overwhelm it, but just, like if you ever eat a, a stuffy, like a, it's like a, a cahog, a cahog, 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 a cahog. It's like a um, it's like a big clam, and it's stuffed with like the clam meat and breading and like chorizo sometimes, and you put hot sauce on it. And I eat like mashed potatoes with the Worcestershire sauce the same way I, I it'd probably be a useless comparison but I, I i enjoy it on like if i have a meatloaf and mashed potatoes or a steak and mashed potatoes i'll definitely reach for the worcestershire sauce and kind of sprinkle it on on both uh and it's really good i really enjoyed it i really enjoy it um so yeah cool channel cool video um i'm going to get into a comedy reaction i think actually a 
I really do enjoy the racing videos, and I didn't think I would. I I'm going to react to more stuff. Hope you're all doing well. If not, keep your chin up, friend. You'll be good soon. Emotions are fickle. Don't worry. See you next time.